Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather, Wash City's July 30th, and right now we are looking at La Push, Quileute River, Washington. Take a look at that. You can see when the tsunami wave activity started to move towards the coastline, you know, a foot or two variation back and forth between crest and trough. Interesting stuff there. These waves are still ongoing across some of the coastal areas, so watch out if you're near inlets and harbors and things like that. It's still a lot of water being sloshed around there. So yeah, very interesting. The waves are still ongoing. And if we take a look at Port Orford, Oregon, I'm going to zoom in on that, and you can see some pretty good water fluctuations. And you got to imagine what it takes to actually change the sea level height by that much in just a very short amount of time. So a lot of water moving in and out. Be interesting to see what kind of damage was caused by this event. If we take a look at Tacoma, you can kind of look and see that it got a little bit squirrely there as we went through this morning. Probably a little bit of water fluctuation all the way down through some of the Puget Sound. Of course, probably not causing any damage or anything like that, but indeed very interesting to see. Now let's bounce back out wide view th of things here. There's the cinnamon bun there across the Gulf of Alaska, still churning. We got some of this mid-level moisture streaming up across the area, brought pretty widespread thunderstorm activity uh, across a lot of the region yesterday. This is going to be an ongoing theme here for the next couple of days as well. We'll take a look at that as we go through the video here this morning. Also, just a reminder, we did hit 100,000. Thanks to everybody who's been subscribed since the start and who's joined along the journey on the way. Fun stuff here, up over 100,000. Let's see when YouTube contacts me, it should be fun. I can't wait to get the plaque and set it up behind me. So here we go, visible satellite imagery, and let's take a look at what happened yesterday. We're gonna click the lightning overlay on here. We'll put the flashes there and we'll scroll through the day and look at that thunderstorm development across Oregon, Idaho, Montana. Eventually got going across the Cascades of Washington. Models did not do well with sniffing out that activity. You can see it starting to blow up across the Oregon Cascades also. And look at that complex of storms, man, across Oregon all the way through some of the overnight hours. We scroll back out towards this morning and we've got that moisture around. It won't be long before these thunderstorms start to develop here yet again today. Now, 24 hours makes sense. We just, we just looked at that. This is you know, what happened yesterday. And again, models not doing too well with what came up over the Washington Cascades. Have even a similar problem with that today. But if we take a look here, isolated dry thunderstorm potential and scattered dry thunderstorm potential here across portions of Oregon. So you got to really cross our fingers, hoping we're not starting any forest fires. Sometimes it can take several days for these flames to really get going and to see uh, the fires out there. But also speaking of fires on the Olympic Peninsula, Bear Gulch Fire, if you were within range of that yesterday, you could see it was producing some pyrocumulus clouds out there really bubbling up. And yeah, that fire was going pretty wild last night. I'll show you some of that here in a moment. This is for tomorrow as well. Again, some of these storms could be creeping out over some of the lower elevations. We'll take a look at that. So here is the Bear Gulch fire, 1,275 acres, only 8% contained. And again, producing quite a bit of smoke there on the Olympic Peninsula. It's burning grass, brush, and timber. So yeah, not, not a good look out there. But anyway, overall speaking, we're doing okay still on forest fire smoke across the region. But now we're gonna scroll back through yesterday and look at the plume of smoke that it was producing. You can kind of see it did a couple rounds of it there right near sunset. And if we went through the overnight hours, you can see the hot spot on the GOES-18 satellite imagery. Pretty impressive. Then we come back out towards this morning and still producing smoke. This is likely to flare up again and be pretty dramatic as we go through the afternoon and evening uh, today. So if we take a look at the latest, the high resolution rapid refresh, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> 16Z model data run here. So let's scroll through there and you can really see that that smoke is going to get fired up again here today and start pushing across the region. But you also notice across a lot of Oregon and Washington, we are not dealing with too much smoke. So it's the end of July. It can really get bad at this time of year. So we will definitely take it. <coughs> I had to clear my throat there. Long night last night. So taking a look here at Portland, Oregon. Still, again, we have the tsunami advisory for some of the coast, actually all of the coastal areas. The waves are still ongoing as we speak. So just be careful if you're moving a boat around there, if you're near some of the harbors or inlets and whatnot, those water fluctuations are still occurring. We have red flag warnings because of all the lightning data here. And we got some heat advisories for the interior portions as well. Seattle, same thing. Red flag warning for a lot of the Cascades today. Watch out. Some of those storms could be causing some some fires out there. We got fire weather watches for some of the North Cascades as well. This is Medford, Oregon. Again, the waves are still ongoing and you can see thunderstorm activity. Should be no surprise with what we just looked at here for portions of the Southern Oregon Cascades, including Highway 97. 
So Boise talks about it as well, thunderstorm activity. So glad to see Boise getting in on uh, posting some of their graphics here as well. Some of these outflow gusty winds could be 30, 50 miles per hour. So it could be da some damaging winds uh, associated with some of this thunderstorm activity. So let's take a look at where we are right now. Again, there's our cinnamon roll out there across the Gulf of Alaska. It's gonna be with us here for the next few days as well finally starts to get shunted towards the uh, Alaska coastline there, but it is taking a sweet time. I mean, we're off into Sunday afternoon <clears throat> and you can clearly see it's still with us and we still have some of this troughing going as we go through next week. No big heat dome coming up here for the next six days across Pacific Northwest. We'll look at the extended forecast here in a moment. If we look at the high resolution rapid refresh, I've been updating this because it did do quite poorly with picking up that thunderstorm activity. It didn't show any during the day yesterday. And then at the last minute, it tried to show it while it was already starting to develop. But if we go through the day today, it's also not showing it for the Washington Cascades. But again, there is the potential for it. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna back this up a little bit here. We'll go back to the 12Z run. And we're going to put this into motion and go out 48 hours. We'll go off into Thursday morning. You see some of this activity move across some of the Willamette Valley, Northwest Watt, Northwest Oregon, and perhaps back up towards Western Washington as well. You see a little bit of this activity kind of moving across Seattle there. That is the best chance here as we go through Thursday night, it looks like. And then across the Cascades as well, you know, off towards Port Townsend, Port Angeles, maybe up across some of the islands there towards Vancouver Island, maybe across the Puget Sound. Who knows? Not a lot of instability there, but it might be enough to kick off a few lightning strikes. And if we look at the North American model, I'll scroll through the day today, and it does show some shower activity there. So that's what we want to watch out for towards Mount Rainier and again across some of the Cascades for lightning today. If we scroll off into the future a little bit there, as we go through the day Thursday, some stronger storms may start to develop. You got Yakima, Moses Lake, Euphrata, <clears throat> Wenatchee, Ellensburg, under the gun. Maybe the Tri-Cities even getting a thunderstorm here as we go through the day Thursday. Moves up across the Cascades. And how much of that is going to move west of the Cascades? All good question. How much instability will be left as we go through Thursday night and towards Friday morning? Then finally, that is going to move up and out of the area. And we're going to bring the onshore flow back and put an end to that thunderstorm threat here west of the Cascades for sure. Now, Next six days, total precipitation in inches. Take a look at that. Not much west of the Cascades. We're not looking at any washout for Portland or Seattle or Southwest BC or anything of that nature. Some isolated heavier amounts maybe with some of these storms here, but overall speaking, not a lot of precipitation here over the next six days, especially with thunderstorms around. And there's the 90th percentile. I mean, this is on the upper levels of the upper fringes of the ensemble members there and just not a lot of precipitation showing up there, relatively speaking. Uh, looking at the North American model as we go through the day on Thursday, it is showing some instability. This would be elevated storms, 700 millibars is about 10,000 feet. So there is that layer of instability aloft, but is it going to be enough to trigger a few lightning strikes? My gut tells me do not completely rule that out. We will go over that again one more time tomorrow morning and try to get a better picture of what is going to occur. So you got the European artificial intelligence on the left. You got the GFS, the global forecast system, the USA model on the right. Let's put this into motion and see where we are headed. So we start to deal with that Gulf of Alaska low. It starts to weaken a little bit there, but it's still casting this trough across the West Coast of North America on both the GFS and the artificial intelligence. Definitely no heat wave coming up as we go through next week. Troughing remains. GFS tries to start to build some ridging that starts to nose back up towards the Pacific Northwest. Another trough swinging through on the artificial intelligence, but it's also developing a ridge back up across the Pacific Ocean all the way up towards the Gulf of Alaska. So continue on there. And this ridge would start to warm us up a bit again there. The GFS does show a bit of a ridge here, but again, not much confidence in the extended forecast, man, I'm telling you. And the GFS starts to really warm us up as we go through August 10th, 11th or so. But again, take that with a grain of salt for sure. Purely fantasy right now. N National blend of models here. I almost said North American model. Um, take a look at that. A very warm day here for Western Washington, Southwest BC. You're looking at some mid and upper 80s, some 90s showing up for the Willamette Valley. Temperatures reaching up over 100 degrees east of the mountains there. Boise quite warm as well. Bend, Oregon into the 90s. We go through tomorrow. Still another very warm day for Seattle, 83. Blue Angels will be practicing on Thursday. And you can see the Willamette Valley there, 84. These temperatures though are very dependent on just how much cloud activity is going to be moving across the area. So I, I got to throw that 
that in there because we might not realize some of these temperatures, again, depending on how thick the clouds are and if there's any precipitation around. So we go on in through Friday. We cool things down west of the mountains also. First day of seafair for Seattle. Some upper 70s there. Not bad. Fairly comfortable. Warmer across the Willamette Valley up into the mid and upper 80s. Look at Medford, Oregon checking in at 94 on Friday. We go to Saturday, 80 for Seattle. Sunday cooling down a little bit more there. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Who knows what's going to happen after that. We'll worry about that later. And this is the National Blend of Models total precipitation here over the next 10 days. You see it doesn't have much for Seattle at all. Cascades, better chance, of course, as well as the thunderstorm activity here. But you can't rule out a little bit of that getting out over the west portion of western Washington. 6 to 10 day. Got this kind of broad brush below normal mixed bag stuff here for the Pacific Northwest. I don't know about that. That is definitely subject to change climate prediction center showing above normal precipitation here but I'll take that with a grain of salt and my daughter wanted to thank everybody who's been donating i'm going to get the names up and we're going to put those and display those coming up here if you want to remain anonymous you can do so as well but yeah the donations have been coming in very uh, beneficial to the robotics team here so if you want to donate find that in the link down below the patreon page link is down below as well and if you want a weather station it's down there also but yeah anyway Fun stuff there, 100,000 yesterday. Hope you guys have been enjoying the channel. Let me know what you think down below. Um, we'll break this all down again tomorrow. Click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys then.